Uh, okay, up next, yeah. we have an amazing, yet another amazing guest. We have the fabulous Renee Beaker. She uh, joined our wellness hour and then said, you know what? I think that maybe we could use one just for us ladies. Talk about lady things. That's right. So yeah. um, this has just become this sort of beautiful sisterhood of folks that are on the Women on Wellness group. And Renee is getting... And you want now. and you want me to talk to her? Oh, <laughs> I do. Hey, you're all bundled up. Is you it look at her. In the Pacific Northwest? <laughs> you're getting snow today. What? Oh. I'm sorry. You're getting to look a lot like Christmas. Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm glad you're singing and I'm not. Yeah, yeah. Because that yeah. would close the show down. <laughs> That's why I'm not are either. We, are we getting to the place where, like, remember when? The old Jerry Lewis telephones, you start to get haggard and then be a little goofy. I it's too early in the day for Lee to start getting goofy. That's I think that's game. kind of where we're getting. Yeah, too. Yeah. You know, we each gotta have like the the, the bow tie, right? That he just starts to start stuff. do and then oh yeah, and then we're all exhausted. No, we have well, one. I just Renee, Renee brings the energy. Shining face, Renee. I'm gonna let you and Tim have a chat. So great to see you. Thanks for coming on. Thanks. It's good to see you too. Hi, Tim. Hi, how are you doing? You know, it's snowing here. So it's, it's, it's snowing. snowing. Pacific it's snowing. Northwest. Whereabouts are we, Renee, right now? In Pacific Northwest? I am in Bremerton, which is southwest of Seattle. It's on the other side of the pond. Wow. Okay. Yeah. And it's snowing. Is this snow that will stay for months or is it snow that no, melts? No, 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 no. I lived in New Hampshire. Snow stayed for the whole Yeah, winter. you know but what no, I'm talking this, about. Yeah, this will be gone maybe by today, maybe by tomorrow. Maybe by tomorrow. <laughs> Yeah. Well, then enjoy it, right? I wish it was like that here in our area of the north, but it's not. So, so yeah, as uh, Lee has mentioned that, you know, you've, you've been a huge advocate here. And, you know, we've talked before on episodes that you've been a part of and a lot about, you know, career shifts and, you know, how do you transition your life, especially you know, with FSHD and how do you do that? And you've just continually stayed involved. Um, being part of the wellness group. And then of course, uh, the wow group, which I love women on wellness. Uh, tell us a little bit about, I guess, maybe each one of those groups, or maybe you just want to, you know, pinpoint just in on the women's group. Of course you can, but just for those that don't know about it, maybe we get more involved. Sure. So, um, the well women on wellness was a spinoff of the wellness group. Um, a couple of very proactive women said, you know, we're not really comfortable discussing all these things in right. this group. Let's do it just women. And so we did, and it's been wonderful. Um, our average um, meeting size is about 25 to 27, which is great, which is great. And we've built a wonderful community, and we're always looking for new members. Um, we talk about sensitive issues for women. Um, we've talked about incontinence and how do you know when to um, – Move to a different assistive device, um, and it's been wonderful. The the uh, comments and the engagement has been really really good. And several of the women have become friends outside of our group, which is what you want to see. Nice, it's a great community. Now, is it is it is it all built on like a pre registration to be into yes. the group? So you get like Zoom right. links, I assume. Right. So there's two criteria to participate. You need to be a woman, and you need to have FSHD. We're not going to check to make sure that you've got a genetic test. We just want to make sure that the, the group is inclusive so sure. that people feel comfortable. But yes, you just go to, you go to um, the website, you click on calendars, which is up on the right hand corner. Yep. In calendars, you go right to, um, it meets on the first Wednesday of the month. So go to the next Wednesday. Um, so it'll be December 7th. Click on that um, little entry. And it'll have a little registration button. And once you register, you shouldn't have to register again. Mm. And you should get, um, June has it set up so that the day before the meeting, you get a link to get you into the Zoom. And I send out a reminder to everybody that's in the group currently about a week before. So I sent one out yesterday yeah. um, and to remind people what the topic is going to be. Next time, we're going to talk about um, mattering and having value as a woman with FSHD. We're also going to touch on depression because we know that that is um, a common concern with anyone with a chronic illness. Mm -hmm. So um, I think it'll be well received. Last time we talked about self-compassion and the importance of self-compassion. 
Um, it's hard for us to be compassionate towards ourselves when we might be very compassionate about others that might be in the same situation. Yeah. So that's interesting. Yeah. yeah that's, that's, some, that's some, that's some heavy topics that yeah. you're um, yeah. tackling there. Uh, right. How long I know. Yeah. When I look at the calendar, you're right. The next one looks like December 7, mm-hmm. uh, 5 PM uh, to seven. Um, <clears throat> To six. It's just an hour to six. Oh, it's and just that's Eastern, Eastern, Eastern and that's time. Eastern. So it's, right. right. Correct. Um, so yeah, it's just an hour. That was, that was kind of where I was going with the, with my next question is like, does it ever go past? I mean, yes. I, that's hard to take those subjects and just leave it in an hour, especially if you have a lot of people. You're absolutely right. And there have been times when we have um, continued that topic in the next month. Okay. Um, okay. And we also have an email list where people will talk to each other. We also have a Facebook page that's private specifically for the FSHD Society for Women on Wellness. And so sometimes we have those discussions on those web pages also. So there's opportunities to have conversations privately and confidentially um, mm-hmm. outside of the meeting. Um, but if, if, it be, if it looks like we need to have more time to discuss it, there's no problem with, with continuing that on to the next month. And that's, that's been very helpful. And you know, I know other groups that meet too. Sometimes they'll have, you know, guest speakers come on. Have you ever had that situation? We, we did. Um, I think it was about two or three months ago. We had a physical therapist who's a specialist in uh, pelvic, whoops, I just lost my ear, but um, oh. who's a, thank goodness I have both of them. In. It's like, I still hear you. <laughs> Since I can't reach the darn thing. Um, so we have a physical therapist who's a specialist in pelvic relaxation which is a very common concern with all women, but especially women with um, a muscular dystrophy. And it was excellent. She was very, very good. And the women asked excellent questions as I knew that they would. I'm trying to think, um, for self-compassion, one of our members is um, a psychologist and is very well-versed in self-compassion. So she led that meeting for us. Um, yet the women in the group are extremely well-versed in many different things. And so I like to get them engaged um, because, you know, we have women that are so, um, they're experts in many different things that could really help us. Yeah. So I, I really, I'd like to encourage them to participate as well. And then when it comes to, once again, you mentioned, because it says, um, you know, it's by invite only, meeting certain criteria, it's not just anybody. How about referencing any like past conversations? Is that all done through then that email thread? It can be. Absolutely. It can be. The other thing is, is that I take notes for it. Okay. I depersonalize it. So there's always a record of the, the oh, discussion God. that we had. And if people bring up certain products or websites, I always put that in there as well. So if um, there's somebody that hasn't participated or was not able to participate in that at certain meeting, they can, they, everybody gets the minutes. The minute. They're notes. They're not minutes. They're notes. Everybody gets that so that they can get that information. And we're doing the same thing with the wellness meeting also. We have somebody that's taking uh, notes for that meeting mm-hmm. um, because many people want to keep that information confidential. They want they don't want to video or record those meetings except in very certain instances. So we also have somebody that's taking notes in those meetings as well. And there, June puts them on the blog so that everybody has an opportunity to, um, hang on just a sec. Hey, Gab. <laughs> my ear buds yeah, falling out. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yes, yeah, so we are also doing that with the wellness meeting yeah. as well. That's excellent. Yeah. That's excellent. Yeah, it is. It is. Wow. So we're also in the process of doing a survey for the wellness meeting so that we can get different topics. And there have been a couple of people that have mentioned that maybe we need to do another spinoff or two for different types of topics or different needs. Holy cow. That would be... Yeah, I mean, you're really kind of going down some uh, rabbit holes. I mean, there's, this is opening up quite a bit of, of doors. It is. It is. But, you know, it's, people are expressing a need, and God bless June. She's saying, okay, let's go for it. Let's figure out what people need and what we can provide, and let's see what we can do with that yeah. information. Yeah. Do you ever think that it's going to grow beyond then just the one time that it, that it meets? Um, like, like expand it every week? Possibly. Um, I'm not so sure that every week would work, um, but we have a task force 
that works on that meeting, the wellness meeting, to make sure that people's needs are being met. And so we were discussing yesterday that maybe we need to, you know, once a quarter or twice a year, have a special discussion on, for example, with um, assistive devices mm. or men's topics or I can't remember the other one because I'm old. <laughs> But the, the point is, is that um, the society, in specifically June, is very um, open to, yeah. you know, helping folks. And support it. Um, which, absolutely, which is the mission of the society. It is. It is. And, like, you know, days like today, Giving Tuesday, I know as a community, we're bringing a lot of volunteers in to talk about what they're doing, um, including yourself. And we've also heard from certain pharmaceuticals or, or biotech companies and things. and and kind of what they're doing. So we're seeing kind of different elements of what the FSHC Society is trying to do and kind of help. And, and um, you know, what are, you know, you're very involved, of course, with the volunteer side of it, with, with the uh, women's group and, and so forth. And, you know, based on some of the things maybe you've heard a little bit today of, or even just in past uh, knowledge of what, what some of those pharmaceutical and biotech companies are like working on, uh, what do you think is the hope what does that hope feel like right now for you? You think it's, it's becoming more positive for like a treatment right. cure? Right. From a personal perspective, you know, I, I said before that I was diagnosed back in 82 yeah. and there was no hope whatsoever. None. None. Right. So to where we are now, I mean, we know the cause. I'm going to start here. <laughs> we know the cause. We, we know what what is causing our disease to um, continue to cause havoc. Yeah. Um, and we have drugs that are promising to to help. So I'm feeling much more hopeful than I did five years ago. Mm-hmm. Much, much more hopeful. And for for those that are kind of maybe borderline getting involved to help or even to give today, what would be your final kind of plea to them? Those are on the fence. Kind of want to get involved with FSHE Society. You know, if I give money, is it really going to go to help something? Yes, it is. It really does go to help. It, it definitely does. If you look back to what we knew 10 years ago to what we know today, the society has been very, very involved, very, very involved and instrumental in those discoveries and um, the ability to, to look at different drugs. We don't have to have a brand new drug. We're looking at drugs that are already out there that can help yeah. to, to treat us um, and potentially cure us. Right. Well, thank you. It is. It is coming. There is coming. still hope. It's coming. So please yeah. help us. Help <laughs> us. You know, in any little bit because we have people. Oh, no. It's coming. <laughs> we have, I tell you, <laughs> uh, we have people that are being very generous and, and offering matches up to $150,000, yeah. which is, is wonderful. It's, a, you know, a tremendous uh, boom and boost to yeah. the society. Absolutely. So, well, thanks I lost my for being hat. Here. Yeah. Oh, my hat. You are beautiful with your hat. You are beautiful right. without your hat. You're, You're just, very kind. You You're will. very kind. Facts well, thank you facts. for having me on. Yeah. It's, thank, thank you. Thank you, both of you, for all that you do and Tim for manning this all day long and talking with them. Well, so Renee, you are so special to me and to everyone in the community and the way that you just embrace everyone and the group that you've brought together and the work that you do. I'm just so, I'm very thankful for you. and. Thanks Thank for being you. here today. Thank you. I'm thankful for the wonderful women that are part of that group and for everybody that's part of the wellness hour. It's just tremendous. The community so that we've built is just wonderful. And Very there's fantastic. always room for more. So if somebody's there out is. there and they're yes. thinking about it and they haven't gotten engaged, today's the day. Go mm-hmm. to the gathering place. Uh, there's a, uh, a place on our, a page on our website specifically dedicated to that, to online communities the gathering place and we've always got room for you or if there you want to start a new group that meets another you know a niche group of people we are we are here for it so absolutely um, absolutely all, we, we are yeah. stronger we when we're together yeah oh absolutely as a community absolutely all right and thank you very much thanks renee stay warm renee have a great okay. one <laughs> bye-bye bye-bye i know i was like no not the hat Keep the hat I know on. I wanted to crawl I wanted to crawl for... through the screen and put the hat back on her head for her. Yeah. I was like, this is why we need a cure. <laughs> I know that struggle of trying to get 
Even my headphones. Back, back on your head. Yeah, yeah. to try to get the arms up there and do what you need them to do within control and precision. It just. You yeah. know, um, it's so interesting that this that you talk about that because so often um, people think about your lower body mobility. Oh, and yeah. this this what I'm this speaks to the power of the patient voice, right? right. Through the voice of of the patient um, meeting that we did a few years back with the FDA, through the true cost and through various of the other studies and just the listening that June does. Um, and what patients are telling us, so many patients say, you know, look, if I got to lose something, I'd rather, I, I, you know, I can find a way to wear orthotics or get around. But that loss of upper mobility is so impactful on someone's life. And that was not on the FDA's radar. You know, that's oh not something goodness. people were right. paying attention to. Right. And, and that is the power of patients saying, look, this matters to us. Mm -hmm. If I can put my hat back on my head, right. brush my own hair, or brush my own teeth. Those are things I take for granted every day. You know, or at least I sure did until I got to know all of you. And, <laughs> um, you know. Right. Yeah. Like, I mean, you, you adapt, but you can only adapt for so long. Right. And, uh, right. When you right. those that do get diagnosed, it answers the questions of, oh, that's why I do it like that. Mm -hmm. you know, and like, I, 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 thought, I thought everybody puts their elbow on the, uh, you know, like when you're taking a shower and you put, yeah. I think everybody puts their elbows on like the little shower uh, shelf and then washes their hair. Yeah. Like, oh, you mean other people can hold them up there? You know, it's yeah. Like, yeah. Well, yeah. and it's, that's what studies like the MOVE study, they're yes. going to identify and, these are things that patients know from their everyday life that we have to quantify and right. qualify and report on to say, you know, let's say I'm making this up. I'm not a scientist, but let's say there's a, an or there's a there's a device or a wearable yeah. or a therapy, something that's going to give you back upper body mobility. Mm -hmm. If we haven't identified that that is a meaningful measure for people with FSHD, we risk it not being covered by insurance or not being being approved. So right. if we can prove through quantifiable measures, through research like the surveys that we put out and the papers that June and others write, that that upper body mobility matters and is meaningful for the quality of life of patients, we stand a better chance of getting some of those things covered right. by your insurance mm -hmm. or a therapy that might help with that covered because it's now a measurable outcome that we're tracking on. And those are the kinds of things patients need to tell us. Patients need to raise their voice and be a part of it. And so when you answer the surveys and answer the questions, you're adding your individual voice and your personal experience to the collective voice and collective experience of the crowd. And the work we do is just to turn the volume up for all of you, right? And it's those dollars that get donated that plug us in. <laughs> you know, they, they plug it right. in and give it power and allow us to crank up the volume. It can't, just can't be done any other, you know, none of it comes for free, unfortunately. Oh, and, 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 and then imagine if you had a bunch of small little tiny groups that, you know, only could donate their time to some degree. And then they're only yep. so small to get the word out. And your reach isn't as far. Your voice isn't as loud as the powerful. Uh, you know, Mark Stone has talked about before when I've seen him speak, it's like, you know, if we're all one voice, you know, right. we're a lot louder. We can do a lot more good. That's exactly more. right. And that's yeah. not to say and that we, comes at costs. That's right. And that's not to say we want everybody to be homogenized and only get in lockstep with us or say what we want them to say. The opposite is absolutely true. What we want is everyone to bring their individual experience, to bring yes. their unique voice, to bring their individualized talents and treasures and all of those things to bear for the betterment of the community. And what will start to happen is collectively, some of that information, there will be, it's just like June was talking about the bowel and bladder issues. No yeah, yeah. Pay any attention right. to that, but because enough people talked about it and it might've been unique within each person, how it that how it showed up in their life we now went oh you know what that is a thing that is a thing now and we did some research and there's now a paper being published and people are paying attention to the fact that that is mm -hmm. something that impacts people with fshd and we can we can maybe now work to fix it but you gotta identify it and know it's there to be able to work to fix it and so you know all of those things matter 